This is One on One. There he is, Steve Touré, a jazz trombonist, band leader, composer, professor of jazz trombone at the great Juilliard School. Good to see you. My pleasure. It's an honor having you with us. Yeah. Now you've got a connection to this place, the New Jersey Performing Arts Center, right? Yeah, I've played here several times. Yeah, and um, Dorthan? Dorthan Kirk. Dorthan is, Kirk. Just, just describe that connection as well. Well, I used, WBGO. Not only WBGO, I used to play with her husband, Rasan Roland Kirk, mm. and that's how I met her. And BGO came later. It's interesting. All we're the, right here yeah. in Newark. Newark has a great jazz history, Completely. right? Completely. Sarah yeah. Vaughan came from Sarah Vaughan Way, right? Wayne Shorter. Wayne Shorter. Oh, my Woody God. Shaw, who Woody I Sh played with. By the way, you've been with the Saturday Night Live band since night. Is it 84? 30 years now. Wow. How, by the way, how'd that happen? I auditioned. There was two jobs in my life that I auditioned for. Both great ones, Ray Charles and Saturday Night Live. Now you get, hold on, do the Ray Charles thing because that, was a, that is a huge part of your professional life. 72, that's the first big gig that I had and we traveled around the world and, and the first time I played with somebody of his stature mm. and um, it was a profound experience, life changing. You Describe know, it. Well, it was a big band. I was in the big band, and I played trombone in the section, occasional solo. In fact, there's a video out, Ray Charles in the Holy Land. It was live in Israel and from a concert, and I have a solo on that, on that video. But uh, just listening to him sing every night, that was what I lived for. You know, I memorized my parts on most of the tunes just so I could enjoyed listening to him because everything he did came from here. It was mm. everything. He could sing country, he could sing blues, funk, jazz, gospel, music. And it was all feeling. It all came from his heart. And that's you, why everybody loved him. Steve, did you get to interact with, with him much? Talk. Did you get to interact with Ray? A little bit when I was in the band, but I was very young then, and he was already an icon. But right. as the years went, when I left him, I went. I ended up going with Art Blakey. Art brought me to New Jazz York. Jazz Messengers? Yeah. Tell folks how important that, because people don't know. Because growing up, I used to hear about them. That was... Um, Big. Graduate school. <laughs> <laughs> For people who are not jazz aficionados, describe what that really means. Well... He, playing in his band was like finishing school uh, for real jazz, you know, and he not only taught you about uh, professionalism and playing the music on an extremely high level, but he taught you how to be a band leader. Sometimes he'd tell one of the young cats in the band, okay, introduce the tunes tonight. You go up, take the mic. You talk to the audience. And you say, well, and, you know, and you learn to do it. And he'd have you write songs for the band, and they play your music, mm -hmm. so you got to develop in that way. And he would teach you things, you know. I remember, i tell you a funny story. When I first played with him, you know, and I was excited, but scared to death, too. Cedar Walton was playing piano, Woody Shaw was playing trumpet in the band, and, and I had the records, and these were monsters to me. And, and here I was a kid in this company, so I wanted to do my best, and. I was trying maybe a little too hard, you know, and Art would tell me, oh, slow down, man, take your time. Don't play everything you know in the first chorus. <laughs> tell a story, take your time. And, and boy, he wear me out my lip water. He says, see, you got to take your time and build it up so it means something. Don't just play a lot of notes, tell a story. Mm -hmm. So he helped you to find your voice, you know. It's interesting as you're talking about this, because being a band leader, requires a whole range of skills and tools beyond being a musician, which mm -hmm. is hard enough, mm -hmm. right? Which those of us who are not can't even imagine. What does it take to be great as a band leader? Um, a big part of it, well, to me, first of all, there's a big difference between being a musician and being an artist. A musician, I have the highest respects for, somebody could could play in a, in a band, in an orchestra, and play the part and never make a mistake and just perfection in terms of the craft of their instrument. 
But an artist is somebody that has their own voice, that has a unique ability to communicate with the audience on their own, mm. in their own standing. And so part of being a band leader is having your own music and having your own sound, your own personality that comes to fore. And then you also have to be able to know how to communicate with the audience, talk to them and, and um, you know. Just, connect. Yes, connect. That's exactly. Interesting. It's interesting. You talk about different art in the art form of being an artist. Mm-hmm. And one of the last things you did before you sat down was could you, t- you said, could you take those shells and put them over here? Those shells. Mm-hmm. What do they have to do with your music? Well, I'm known for playing shells, <laughs> as well as trombone. Playing shells. Yeah, because these are the roots of, of the brass instruments. See, I cut it off and I made a mouthpiece on it, just like on a trombone, because I'm a trombonist. If I was a trumpet player, I'd make it smaller. Mm. So it'd be like a trumpet mouthpiece, but I'm tromboner, so I made it like that. And you make the sound the same way as you would with a brass instrument. Can we hear it? Sure. But it's, this is a natural instrument, it was alive once, and it's like a rock, you know, but it, it has a unique resonance. That just came out of you yeah. through that. Yeah. And, and, and are they all different? Yeah. The, the, now, this one is a little lower pitched. Lower pitch? Yeah. See, the primary note is before you put your hand in it. When I put my hand in it, it lowers the pitch. <laughs> And then, and then you can do something like I learned from Rasan. That's beautiful. Yeah, so you can get harmonies with them. And did someone come to you and say, "Do this," or did you just self-taught? Excuse self-taught. Me. Yeah. And you love to teach. Oh yeah. And, because, and especially in the last ten years, I felt a calling to teach because. I really believe in this music, uh, jazz for lack of a better word. Yes. As a, um, the music is already defined as that, as that name. Uh, so to try to change the name of it, it's, it's going to be a hard sell because people already understand what it is by that name. But uh, it comes from African-American culture. and based on the blues and everything, but it's really America's classical music. And it's unique to this country. And like Art Blakey used to tell us, no America, no jazz. And it's true. Mm. And uh, it, the thing I love about it so much is it not only makes people feel good, but it brings all people together. When you go to a jazz concert, or something, you see all kind of people, from white people, black people, Asian people, uh, Latino people, all kind of people. Everybody come to get, and can appreciate and enjoy the music. You know about the music. Yeah. By the way, it, you mind if I plug a little bit? Yeah. These two CDs. Um, Woody's delight, right? Yeah, that's. that's and the what, bones of uh, art. Yeah. Two very different. Yeah. CDs, right? Yeah. By the way, how can people find out about you and what you're doing and where you're performing? I have a website at www.stevetouré.com. Love it. And by the way, what are you going to be uh, performing right here? In New Jersey Pass? No, no, right here. In just in a, in a few moments. What oh, are you going to be doing? Oh, 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 I'd like to play a, a composition I wrote called Brother Ray. Brother Ray about? I wrote it for Mr. Charles, for Mr. Ray Charles. And you're going to be performing with uh, whom on the piano? Uh, my pianist is the wonderful Mr. Sharp Radway. Sharp Radway. Yeah. And um, I just want to say that uh, it's funny that I've heard about you for a while. Mm-hmm. And uh, the reason we got together here at our part- with our partners at the New Jersey Performing Arts Center is we said, hey, listen, let's bring on talented people who can not just talk about it, but do it. And so, Steve, I want to thank you for being with us. And we look forward to hearing you. Thanks so much. Thank you. You got it.
One on One with Steve Adubato at NJ Pack has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence, and by the New Jersey Performing Arts Center, in cooperation with NJTV and 13 for WNET. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato at NJ Pack has been provided by Prudential Financials Global Communications Department, PSENG. The New Jersey Education Association, TD Bank, Josh S. Weston, Cone Resnick, and by the Fidelco Group. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. This program has been made possible in part by Franklin Templeton Investments.